A battle at the big house coming down to this fourth and goal for Michigan down four. Give it to Khalil Mullings. He's in for the go ahead touchdown. During that drive, he was literally dragging defenders down the field. A former linebacker converted to a running back. 17 carries, 159 yards, two touchdowns. USC time on the clock, fourth and nine. We need a first down to keep the game alive for USC. Miller Moss to the sideline and short of the sticks, one yard short. Jacoby Lane on the catch, but it is short of the first down and Michigan stands tall and holds on to win it 27-24 despite a valiant second half comeback from the USC Trojans. This Big Ten on CBS postgame report is presented by Belfort Property Restoration in studio with former Louisiana running back Emory Hunt. What a game that was. Just first, your reaction to how that all played out. Run game, defense, 2024 was still alive, baby. I loved it. How about Khalil Mullings and what he was able to do on that drive? I mean, he was dragging defenders down the field. That 63-yard drive, shedding tacklers. They let him finish what he starts as he runs into the end zone for the go-ahead score. Well, when you have a guy that, that showed that he wants to win, like he did on that throughout the game, but on that drive, breaking tackles, getting them down in position to perhaps win the ball game and then subsequently scoring a game-winning touchdown, you tip your cap to that young man because this shows you the want to, the effort. They didn't panic when they were down, and they were able to lean on a guy like they talked about all throughout the broadcast perfectly. Former linebacker turned running back did a great job in not only finishing, starting the game but finishing the game with authority. Yeah, it was not looking good for Michigan up until that drive because they went punt, fumble, punt, punt, fumble before that drive to win the game. So you talk about doing the little things right. In the end, they're able to do the little things right. But when you talk about USC, a slow start is really what put them behind here. They only had three points at halftime. They had 118 total yards. And then you got to claw your way back on the road in the big house. It was just too much to overcome, even though it was so close in the end. Yeah, you talk about a team in USC that gave up nearly 300 yards rushing on the day, 6.5 yards to carry. That offensive line couldn't really pick up the blitz. Defensive coordinator Wink Martindale had answers for everything they threw at him on USC side of things. However, USC did fight back in the ball game. They were able to get you know, points needed to, to take the lead. But you talk about a defense that had four sacks, eight TFLs, and the pick six that you saw right there with Will Johnson, an outstanding NFL cornerback prospect. So this defense for Michigan, in, com in combination with their run game, was a big reason why they won this matchup. The defense stood on uh, business today, stood on all ten toes down, and really shut down USC's offensive attack, especially the passing game. Well, Michigan made the change at quarterback going from Alex Orgy coming from Davis Warren, and you saw that he was really ineffective in the passing game. 32 yards passing, that's the fewest passing yards in a game for Michigan since 2000. And so if this game had flipped the other way, we would be sitting here right now absolutely second-guessing and second guessing everything that they've decided to do here because you go 32 passing yards and Emory, you'd look at me and go, that's not going to get it done. How did they get it done? Because 32 passing yards, rest of way is not going to get it done. 32 American passing yards in 2024. And I, please tell me in that last game where they had 32 something passing yards, it was a hurricane combined with an earthquake. Because I don't understand how you have 32 passing yards in the 2000s. But the reason why they won this football game, they out physical USC. Up front, along the line of scrimmage, the game started with that back when Princeton played Rutgers in 1869. It was a run game, defensive line, can you stop the run? I am tougher than you, I am better than you, and I can prove it. And Michigan did that throughout the course of the game. Passing game be damned, we went out there, we ran the football, you couldn't stop us, and we got the win. So are you sticking with Alex Orgy next game, or are you thinking about going back to Davis Warren? What are you thinking about here if, if you're Sharon Moore? To be honest, I like the mindset that Michigan played with. It, hey, this is a physical mindset, so I think you stick with Orgy, but you expand his passing game. You expand the play calling to help him ease himself throwing the football so you become a little bit more balanced as opposed to being 95% run like they were today. When you take a look at what you saw from USC, what do you take away from the loss? A 27-24 defeat because it was a tale of two halves for USC. Give USC credit for coming back and taking the lead, but you also have to look at their offensive line. There are some question marks there uh, moving forward. Teams now know that they can get after the quarterback. They can 
uh, gamed them up defensively, and that threw off their run game on the back end of the contest. So they couldn't close out the game. So I worry about their offensive line moving forward. That's the big negative takeaway. But the positive is the fact that they went out there, came back, fought through adversity, and took the lead. They just couldn't close out the game. That was a heck of a game, Emory. Really I mean, was. that was right there why we love this sport, why college football is so awesome on a Saturday. Two big brands, two rivals. You have differing styles here. You have USC wants to pass. You have Michigan wants to run. You have Michigan's defense showing up. USC getting its first taste of Big Ten football, even though they said they had Big Ten football when they played LSU in the opener. So how about that Big Ten football? This was the real taste for USC. Now they know what they can expect week in and week out. And this is the kind of games that you're going to get. This is why we. This is why we love it. I mean, this was incredible. From really, I mean, early on it was starting to get a little. We we're like, okay, is Michigan going to pull away here? And then USC comes back and makes it a game. Absolutely, I can't say much more than that. I, I love it. I, I love the fact that we had a great game here on CBS because that's the kind of stuff that you tune in and you watch play for play here. As you take a look at Michigan and the longest active FBS win streaks in conference play now stretching it to 23 as they take out their new conference foe USC once a rival in the Rose Bowl now a rival in the Big Ten. And well, let's get right to the site get back out to the big house welcome to CBS Sports lead college football analyst Gary Danielson Gary we're just talking here at how fantastic that game was uh, there was some mistakes sure but the way that finished that was an incredible finish from two football teams that fought all day long you know everything about this game is like the contrast right I mean West Coast Big Ten brands both teams are brands One's going to run it with a quarterback that they're afraid to let throw it. The other one wants to throw it, but they don't have an offensive line that can block it. So you saw the maneuvering all game. But the one thing that stood out to me is it was a fight to the end. That was really fun to watch that type of competition. Gary, I was a little bit confused by that last play that USC ran uh, eight yards to the sideline when you need nine. What did you see there from your vantage point? Yeah, they, they, they would have loved the receiver to go another yard and a half downfield. And, you know, that's what you got to do. You know, I mean, they're, you know, college receivers and pros might give you an extra yard. And I don't think it would have made any difference to Moss whether he would have gone another yard. So, yes, that could have been. But the ball was thrown to the sideline. Once he was there, there's not much he could have done. Miller Moss did a heck of a job in the second half with three touchdowns. Alex Orgy did not throw a touchdown. They only had 32 passing yards in this game, Gary. That's the fewest passing yards in a game for Michigan since 2000. What do you All think right. about going now forward with Alex Orgy as he replaces Davis Warren rest of way here, Big Ten play? Yeah, it, it, it's really a good question. Now, as much and as successful as Michigan ran the ball yes, last year, they still had J.J. McCarthy to come in there and solve those third down throws. Now, you can see in this game, when it got the third down, there just was nothing there. So I think Michigan gets the W. It's a good win. There's a lot of teams they might be able to play bully ball with. But can they do it to the elite teams? Is it enough for Oregon? Is it enough for Ohio State? I mean, those are the ones you wonder about. So that's still a work in progress. I don't know how much better Alex Orgy can get as a passer, but I think he has to get a lot better if they're going to win the championship in the Big Ten. Tough to walk into the big house and get a win in conference play. I know Texas beat them at their place, but when they play conference games, uh, they're now 14-0 at the big house in conference play. Gary Danielson post game here with that's us true. on CBS Sports HQ. Gary, thank you. Appreciate it. We'll see you next week. All right, thanks, guys. Still to come, full highlights. The big game at the big house delivered a big result next on CBS Sports HQ.